Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the all-new Square Wave 205 by Lincoln Electric. Um, so in this video today, we're gonna we're gonna weld with this. We had a lot of questions from our last video. Um, but I'm gonna go through the process of what this thing can do, and then we're gonna answer some of the questions that we've been getting. And we're gonna do AC TIG welding, and we're gonna run 6010 stick on this machine just to see how it performs. A lot of questions on that. So just to jump right in, a quick overall review: 205 amp Square Wave. 205 amps max on this thing. Uh, it comes with foot pedal, TIG torch, stinger, ground, and then it also comes with an adapter so you can go 110, 220. We got her plugged in the 220. Comes with a regulator. Pretty much everything you need to weld except a gas bottle and it's ready to rock. It comes with a nice little TIG kit, big gas lenses. It goes from 040 tungsten all the way to 332nd. So you can do some thin gauge material with this unit. Um, it's all in this nice little kit, all packed in there. Um, I sharpened my tungsten already. I'll dive in. Now just remember, when I was opening this box up, foot pedal is inside the unit. So it fits in there perfectly. Uh, your cord wraps around the hook. Works out good inside of the square wave here. You can see there's a parameter chart. So if you're not really familiar with either AC or DC TIG welding, it'll give you some good starting. So down to 24 gauge, all the way up to 3 8 on this unit. And then it gives you amperage ranges to run, what size tungsten to run, what filler material to use. So it depends on what you're running on, but it'll give you a good parameters and good start, I should say. Probably won't, you know, a lot of people like to change and mess around with that, but let me jump over here to the screen. I'll show you guys where. So we're in the we're in the process mode. So if you click on the, this button is a is a push in button. So you go boom. And then you can always go back or you can hit process again. But we're gonna go AC TIG. So you see this is what it came set up at 110 amps. But if I hit OK, now it tells me it jumps down into here. So we can pulse. We can change our balance. We can change our frequency and we can change our post flow on this. This is set up for auto. So. For every 10 amps, it gives us a second of post flow. But I'll show you here. Balance, we can change. It goes into auto, and then it starts at 60, all the way up to 90. I like my 75 range right in there. We're gonna try that. We're gonna go over to AC frequency. We can go down to 50, all the way up to 160. We're gonna try it in 120. I, I, I like that one. It kind of gives me a little bit wider arc. So we'll go there. Post flow, we'll leave it auto. And then our pulse, so we're not gonna pulse, but you can see it goes all the way up to 20 pulses per second. And it gets down into the single digit numbers here, 0.5, that kind of thing. So a pretty, very, very, a uh, lot of in-depth, a lot of technology in this little unit for the price. Then we just go back. There we go, we're back to our amperage. Now if we go to the process screen, we can go DC TIG, right? We can pulse, change our post flow. Go back to process, DC stick, which is what we're going to run 6010 on. And then we can pick our mode down here, so we confirm amperage. We can change from soft 7018 to crisp 6010. Press that to save, so it changes out the OCV on this unit, bumps it up, so now we got 80 amps. We'll change that here when we go back, and then you got AC stick as well. Uh, some of the rods, like 7018, can be run on AC. Uh, we see a lot of farmers, that sort of thing, that like to run AC on that stick rod. Some stick electrodes are just made for AC as well. We'll go back, and then we'll go back to AC TIG. That's the first thing we're going to run through. So you can see here, I got my TIG torch in my negative terminal. It is a through the gas. I'll unscrew it here and just show you. Through the gas port DENS connection. So your gas goes in the back, comes through the machine into your TIG torch. Now when you're Turn that in there. It is a little bit cumbersome at first, but it, then it, it does turn to the right. And then obviously got my ground in my positive terminal because we're there. We go. And then we got our foot pedal hooked up. That's the Amphenol connector. 25 foot cord comes with a 12 and a half foot TIG torch. Plenty of room to move around, get everything going. Um, you can see the fan is blowing, so we got some air coming in. So it sucks it through the back, goes through the front to cool the machine. Very very light. As far as portability-wise, um, you can run it on a generator, you can run it on 110. I mean, it's super light, super compact, uh, just to get everything, you know, all, all your stuff wound up. It's kind of cumbersome, but 
it uh, very light machine. So let's give this thing a shot here, and uh, I've got some aluminum that I'm going to run, and we'll try out the AC TIG output on this. All right, so we got it set up here. Um, we got my gas on, pure argon. Uh, we got 120 amps on there. That's what I had it set at. Turn it up. Turn my TIG torch here. On. I got the foot pedal on. This thing does have high freak start, but you can do lift arc with it. Um, if you choose to, some people in DC, they like to do that. Um, let's give it a shot here in the AC. speed right there really ran really well. I, I, uh, at the very beginning I didn't mash it all the way to the floor but it looks a little cold but it warmed up really nice. Um, well, that ran really really well. For the AC output on that at 120 amps, I mean that that's probably going to be pretty good for 8 inch, maybe 3 sixteenths. I mean you might want to bump it up to go in like quarter inch stuff but uh, 120 at 120 hertz it gives you a nice soft fan on your arc. And it works out perfect. Another thing I really like about this too is that they added a uh, like a longer extension on the foot pedal, so you can rest your heel right there and then just rock your foot. Really pretty. It's very comfortable compared to the older style there. Um, let me get this uh, swapped out for stick. And we'll try it on 6010 and see how it runs. Got my stinger hooked up into my positive, and my ground into my negative. Just flip flop them from the teak torch. And I got some 332nd 6010. Uh, we're going to try it at 80 amps. Might be a little bit hot, but it should be. It might come down again, but let's just do that. I'll try 70 amps on that. Super easy to just turn with your gloves on. We'll give it a shot. I got a big piece of steel, but not too bad just to handle the heat, just to show you guys that'll run it. Now, this is the 5P rod, so this isn't 5P plus, this is the old red brick rod. Um, a little bit harder to start, a little bit harder to run, but it should be okay. Let's give it a shot. stumbled, didn't do anything. My start was a little, that rod's a little bit harder to start, but yeah, it ran really, really well. Um, so if any of you guys have any skepticism about whether to run 6010, you saw it right there, I ran the worst 6010 they make, and it ran really, really well. So if you got any more questions, comments, do your best, leave them down below, we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for some more.